The year is 2025. One day, a young man comes to a bank. When scanned at the entrance, it turns out he has a prosthetic arm. The clerk apologizes for the inconvenience, and the client is led to the vault, where three boxes rented under the name Attila are opened. The young man pulls the heavy metal boxes onto the table with one hand and unstraps his prosthetic arm. The clerk turns away from the disabled man, who then takes out a bionic arm from the boxes and instantly assembles it, attaching it to his shoulder. The clerk realizes too late that something is wrong. Attila throws the man aside and starts breaking into the boxes one by one. Finally, he finds a pouch of precious stones. But then the bank's security staff bursts in. The young man scatters them, but gets seriously injured himself. Nevertheless, Attila makes it to the corridor, where he is blocked by police officers who responded to the call. He takes a bank employee hostage and locks himself in her office. When the police break in, they see only a hole in the floor. With his last strength, Attila makes it outside, where his brother Itor is waiting for him. Itor rushes to help, and Attila hands him the stolen stones. Itor runs for a motorcycle, although Attila asks him to leave him behind. Then, realizing he is only delaying his brother, Attila raises his iron prosthetic and breaks his own neck with one movement. Itor rides away. The scene shifts to the memories of Maria Santos, the daughter of a famous athlete who trained as a long jumper from an early age, preparing to replace her mother. However, it was her sister Gabby who took up the sport. But the girl came to sports after getting a bionic leg prosthesis. The fact is that in the 2030s, the world was swept by a bionic revolution. New prostheses appeared on the market, significantly enhancing the abilities of disabled people compared to regular athletes. As a result, Gabby became a gold medalist, pushing Maria into the background. Meanwhile, in the present, the police quickly learn that Attila is a former top-rated boxer, a rising star in sports. When Bionics appeared, he staged an accident to get a bionic prosthesis, but the fraud was uncovered and his permit for the prosthesis was revoked, so this bounty was clearly obtained dishonestly. A detective asked to photograph Attila's tattoo, hoping to learn something from it. Itor's colleagues express their condolences, and he shows them the loot when they introduce a new guy who is good with IT technologies. Gus scans the diamonds and finds out they are not as valuable, and the sum obtained for them will be small, but the hackers demanded a million from the athletes. Itor suggests pulling off another heist and proposes creating a new bionic, as now he knows how to do it. The men go to the stadium where Maria trains, and it turns out that Gus is her brother. Maria recalls how Gabby had her leg amputated due to a tumor, after which she received a bionic leg. Their brother grew up amidst constant training. Their father worked with one sister and their mother with the other. But after their mother's unexpected death, Maria's bond with her brother strengthened, and now he and Itor have come to her for help. Gus tells her he joined a group that helps athletes in tough situations and invites her to join, but Maria does not give an answer. Meanwhile, prosthesis manufacturers discuss new technologies with the girl's father, Ricardo. The Bionic Games will be the main achievement of marketing efforts, and Gabby will be the company's main face, but for this, she must set a new world record. That same day, Maria comes to Utter's club. The man hints at a new way to succeed, self-mutilation. However, this is illegal. In the evening, Maria goes to a party dedicated to Gabi, but looking at her sister's entourage, she realizes her own inadequacy. Maria accuses bionic athletes of no longer being real athletes. After a harsh verbal altercation with Gabi, Maria rides away. She speeds through the night city on her motorcycle, playing a Puccini aria, and gets hit by a car. Waking up in the hospital, Maria realizes she no longer has a right leg. Gabi and Ricardo struggle to calm her down. Detectives find out that Attila's skull tattoo on his arm was the emblem of non-bionic athletes, and Itor has the same tattoo. Together, they advocated for people's right to choose whether to be regular or bionic. The detective decides to follow Ator. At this time, Gabby begins teaching Maria how to handle the prosthesis correctly. She forces her sister to drop the crutches and hop on one leg. Maria is thrilled that she will soon gain something new. Later, she undergoes testing. They show her a chip that revolutionized prosthetics because it captures all the impulses from the cerebral cortex and transmits them accurately to the prosthesis. Finally, it is implanted in her head. The girl receives her prosthesis and starts training. Ricardo is impressed by her determination, and Gabby advises on how to best use all the prosthesis's capabilities. Meanwhile, Itor, with Gus's help, devises a plan to rob an armored truck. For this, he will need Maria. 
The detective continues to follow Ator and tracks down Maria. He watches her training and sees technician Dario turn off her chip due to a power drop. The girl falls, not completing the jump. Dario and Gabby explain that if a zero appears on the display embedded in her wrist, she will simply fall into a coma. Later, Maria meets with Ator and tries to dissuade him from the heist, but he vows he is doing it for those whose lives were ruined by the appearance of bioprostheses. At night, the armored truck hits the streets of the city. Suddenly, the driver sees a block street and turns following the sign, but around the corner, Maria is waiting for him, pushing the vehicle with her metal leg. It flips over. The woman jumps onto the roof, opens the hatch, and throws in a stun grenade, but when the guards come out, Aitor appears and kills them. This shocks Maria. Later, Gus marvels at her naivety, and Aitor admits that it was her brother who planned the operation. He explains that a batch of chips will soon arrive in the city, and by paying the hackers, they will find out where and when they will appear. Ten former athletes, unfairly denied, will become bionic thanks to this. The girl accepts this, but asks her brother to stay away from Eider. But he suddenly confesses that he always felt inferior in his family. The surviving guard recalls that a bionic attacked them. The detective suspects Maria as he saw her with Ator. He checks the accident in which Maria lost her leg, and suddenly notices that the emergency call came before the incident itself. The next morning, Ricardo tells his daughters that they will both compete in the Bionic Games, although they will be main rivals. The girls start intense training, observed by the inspector. He witnesses their argument, but when he tries to question Maria about the accident, she simply leaves. However, Ricardo and Gabi review the incident recording and listen to the strange call, but the father doesn't want to hear accusations against his daughter. But Gabi starts to think about what happened. And while the father trains Maria, Gabi repeatedly listens to the emergency call recording. Finally, the day of the Bionic Games arrives. Gabi takes the track. She must jump to surpass her own world record. The girl jumps and flies 15 meters, confirming her champion title. Maria goes second. She runs, push off, and Maria covers 17 meters, breaking her sister's record. Suddenly, their third competitor drops out of the games. Now the sisters will compete against each other. Gabby jumps and crosses the 18-meter mark. The stands erupt in cheers. World records are being broken by the champions right before their eyes. Maria accelerates for her second jump. Sensational! She takes the lead again, surpassing her sister's record by 25 centimeters. Ator is informed of the place and time the case with the chips will be delivered. It's time for the third jump. Suddenly, Dario sees Gabi's chips charge dangerously low. He tries to stop the girl, but in vain. The technician warns Ricardo and Maria, but Gabi refuses to listen to her father and doesn't want to talk to her sister. Gabi runs and falls into the sand, losing consciousness. A cry soars above the stands. Maria is declared the new Bionic Games champion. Gabi is taken to the clinic. The doctors promise she will live, but the interface between the chip and the cerebral cortex is destroyed. Maria blames their father for this, and Gus reminds her of their mission. Later, Gabby wakes up and suddenly says she knows the accident was no coincidence. She heard Maria's favorite song in the background of the call, and understood everything. Maria goes to Ator and refuses to cooperate, and although he harshly reminds her of her debt to him, she leaves. That night, Etor's men kidnap Gabi from the hospital, and Maria, having removed her prosthesis before bed, cannot stop them. The next day, she is forced to go to Etor. He reveals his insane plan, according to which Maria must jump between two buildings to reach the chips delivered to one of the skyscrapers. The distance between them is 25 meters, while Maria jumped 18. So Etor's helpers doubt her ability, but he reminds them of Gabi and promises to release her sister if Maria completes the task. Maria runs, flies, and breaks through the neighboring building's glass. She knocks out the guards and takes the case with the chips from them. Then she goes down to the garage where a car is already waiting for her. Maria's car drives away from the building. Arriving at the scene, Dario sees Maria's uncovered face on the footage and falls into despair, confirmed by the inspector. It seems the girl is not meant to be left alive. Maria notices a motorcycle chasing her. She stops by the roadside. The motorcyclist breaks in front of her. A man in a helmet gets off the saddle and stands in front of Maria's car. She suddenly hits the gas and in a fit of rage, runs him over. But when Maria comes out to ensure Aitor's death, she finds Gus's broken and bloody body. Maria screams in horror at what she has done when Aitor calls out to her. Mockingly, he says he was afraid to face her leg, so he sent Gus. The woman tries to attack him, but they knock her out. Maria wakes up at Aitor's base and hears him talking to a man in a hat. It turns out that instead of helping non-bionic athletes, 
He uses the stolen ships to strike a deal with a businessman who wants to use the technology to create his own army of bionic soldiers. Opening the case, the bandits discover they stole much more than 10 ships and rejoice at the windfall. Itor invites Maria to admire the chips, but the girl kicks the case and starts exterminating the group of the now-hated man. Itor himself is the last to fight. He grabs Gabby, trying to stop her sister, but Maria kills her former lover. However, Maria realizes that she is not entirely out of trouble when she hears approaching police sirens. Gabby persuades her sister to escape, and she runs out of the building, but the arriving detective and his men chase after her. The police catch up with Maria in the stadium stands, but the woman doesn't give up and climbs onto a barbed wire fence. The detective urges her to surrender, but Maria jumps down and hangs, caught by her prosthesis. The policeman calls for backup, but the woman unstraps the prosthesis and falls. Seeing all this, Gabby, on one leg, gets to a nearby car and takes her sister away from the police. Only after experiencing a life-threatening event together do the sisters finally understand that it's more important to help each other than to constantly compete. Six months pass. The sisters are on the run. The detective reports that the operation was successful as the stolen ships were found and Itor's gang was destroyed. In reality, the fugitives live in an inconspicuous place, running a school for children with disabilities, igniting their passion for sports. Moreover, they maintain contact with their friend, technician Dario, who supplies them with modern prostheses. One day, Maria and Gabby meet with Aitor's former business partner. The nameless man needs a bionic army, and the Santos sisters prove to him that all he really needs are three highly skilled soldiers. At their signal, a bionically modified Gus emerges from the car, who using new technologies, gained the ability to predict his opponent's next moves, significantly enhancing his combat abilities. The man in the hat is impressed by their skills and agrees to sign an expensive contract with the trio, which they intend to fulfill together. This is where the movie ends, 